Greetings my Philly YouTubers, this is a shot of whiskey, and this video will be a, I guess you can call a response video, to something that was done about a month ago by YouTuber Tara Babcock. For those of you who don't know, she has two different channels. On one of them, she did something called My Fantasy Gang Bang Lineup. So yeah, pretty much what I'm going to do is provide my fantasy lineup. But before I do that, there's a couple of points I'd like to make first. Uh, in Tara's video, which I will be providing a link in the description below, uh, she actually gives two different lineups. One of them is for real people, the other one is for fictional characters. I will be doing the same thing in that regard. The other thing, and this really isn't that relevant, but um, she's clarifying gangbang. Um, for me, talking about five women, that seems a little odd to me. I know that some people do it, but one on five seems a little odd. One on two, sure. One on three, and eh, it's kind of pushing it. Anything that's four or more, definitely overkill. So, that being said, let's go ahead and start with the real woman harem lineup. Tara Babcock is, of course, going to be in this lineup. After all, not only is she gorgeous, but she's the one who came up with this idea, so I feel like I would kind of have to put her in here. But, that being said, on her channel, she does have interesting talking points, as you can see here. And on her first channel, she does gaming. She's a gamer chick. She's more of a nerd than I am. Which, honestly, isn't really that hard of a stretch. Oh, by the way, did I forget to mention that she's gorgeous? Now, that being said, she will also talk about things that we can relate to that aren't about games or about sex, such as social justice related issues, and I guess you can also say feminist related issues, and, you know, to be entirely honest, she also has a really cute cat. I love her cat related videos, not gonna lie. The next one on my list should be obvious if you've been associated with my channel long enough, and that is Tessa Fowler. This beautiful redhead gal has a knockout body along with a beautiful face and of course red hair which let's face it just about all of us like redhead chicks. She's also funny. I've seen enough of her videos as well as pictures to see that she's got a sense of humor. Also like Tara, Tessa is a nerd. She will often cosplay as various comic book characters like Black Cat you see here. She's also done other stuff too. Oh, and uh, did I forget to mention her goods? Mmm, goodness, I love it. Now, there's actually something interesting about Tessa as well, which is how I found out about her is I was looking for some image ideas for Wonder Woman for a poster I was going to be doing at the university that I went to. And in the process, I found Tessa Fowler. It was, it, it sent her to a link for uh, Wonder Woman pictures, which I didn't think to grab for this, but whatever. Uh, in any case, when I first saw her, I was like, oh my goodness, she looks exactly like how I imagine the main character for the novel that I'm writing. W with the exception of the breasts, they weren't that big. But um, as for the character herself, her personality-wise, she's a mix between Deadpool and Lena Inverse from Slayers, and it's set in a fantasy world kind of like Game of Thrones, but definitely a hell of a lot different. So, but yeah, so anyways, Tessa has that special place in my heart because she looks like the main character for my novel. So for the rest of the gals, I decided to keep them as their own separate categories, might as well. So focusing on chicks involved with sports, I decided to go with WWE superstar Becky Lynch. Don't give me that wrestling is fake crap. Okay, I don't care. It's close enough. But, uh, so what is it that I like about Becky Lynch. Well, she's got great fashion sense and it complements her figure usually. She is also one of the few women in the company right now that I would genuinely say is a badass. Um, I think she was a great champion, by the way. See, that belt looks pretty good on her, I think. And I will say that I think she's the victim, well, one of the many victims, of really terrible script writing. I mean, the idea that she lost the title to Alexa Bliss, unquestionably one of the worst women's champions in the past 18 years, and for those of you who are wrestling fans, maybe you'll know who I'm talking about. But, um, 
yeah, I hope to see them do better things with her in the near future because she's talented and she's hot. All right, so for the next celebrity I'm going to focus on, she will be an actress, and her name is Kat Dennings. Yes, I would totally love to break into that girl. Mm -mm -mm. So she is pretty damn funny in my opinion, and yes, she, like some actresses, use her sex appeal as the joke, which I'm totally fine with, even though her most known show, Two Broke Girls, is absolute trash at the very least, looking at her is worth some of the agony. But hey, you know what? It all pays out in the end, because apparently she knows Thor. Not as well as her best friend, but whatever. Close enough. The final celebrity that I wanted to do for this is a musician. And to be entirely honest, I was really torn between two individuals. So I'm going to tell you who both of them are and who the eventual winner is. One of them is Manuela Crawler. And the other one is Lizzie Hale. Manuela, for one album, was the lead singer for a band called Exandria. And I freaking love her voice. Totally fell in love. Uh, in fact, here's an example of why I love her voice. Lizzie Hale is the lead singer of a band called Hailstorm, in which many of their songs involve certain types of coital encounters, some of which include dirty work, American boys, and nothing to do with love. They also did a cover album which included their own version of Lady Gaga's hit Bad Romance, which I think is a hell of a lot better. Here, just take a listen. So it was really tough for me to choose which one to go with, but after some in-depth looking, more than I probably should have, I decided to go with Lizzie Hale. Why? Because she's about a year younger than I am, whereas Manuel is about a year older than I am. Now, as for the fantasy lineup, I've separated it into categories as well. There are two video games, two cartoons, and one comic book. And since the comic book is by itself, let's go ahead and do that one first. Now, originally, I was going to go with Rogue, the Southern Belle of the X-Men, but then it occurred to me what her mutant power is. She wouldn't exactly be a great fit for a harem, and that's supposed to be the point of this. So I'm going to fall back to my number two gal, which is Power Girl from the DC Comics. For those of you who don't know, she's basically another version of Supergirl. And depending on which version of her you look at, it will depend on what kind of Supergirl knockoff she is. But originally, she was from an alternate universe. I believe Earth 2 if memory serves me correctly. So as you can see, she's uh, got some globes there. Very nice. Well, kind of blocked in this image, but the innuendo is there. She also has no problem in admitting that they are a benefit to her in many ways. And sometimes she has to be reminded of it by somebody else. And, of course, if you give a shit about what they say on Tumblr, there's a group that says that the entire reason why she has big breasts is because one particular creator was trying to get his work noticed more. So, But in any case, we got boobies. Both the video games and the cartoons have been separated each by Western variant and Japanese variant. So, looking at the Western variant of video games, I felt that it made sense to go with Lara Croft from the Tomb Raider franchise. I mean, who better? Now, of course, there have been many variations of her throughout the years, so I'm sure different people have their different personal favorites. As for me, my favorite is from Tomb Raider 3, uh, during the levels in which she was exploring a certain part of Nevada. It, no, Nevada! W where's the Nevada map? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, there was a comic storyline thing going on as well, in which she teamed up with the chick from Witchblade, which I don't remember her name, but it was pretty fun. I never finished it, but it was pretty fun. So, yeah, Laura Croft, welcome to my harem. Now, as for Japanese video games, clearly there's a lot of different options, but I feel like for this, I'd be robbing myself 
if I didn't go with a classic character, which is my Shira Nui from the Fatal Fury video game franchise, as well as King of Fighters. So, obviously, there's the physique that she has. She's also a pretty badass fighter, if you know how to play as her. And as you can clearly see, she is built for distractions. That's actually part of the ninjutsu style that she has. And she's even made appearances in other franchises, such as this one, Queen's Gate. And just so we're clear, that's a caterpillar. Okay, so it's totally fine. So yes, must have my Shiranui, no question. And so finally moving on to the cartoons, first for the West, I know there's so many different examples to go with, and I kind of hate to admit this, but I felt like logically I should go with a Walt Disney character, and there's nobody that I like more than Esmeralda from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Good golly is she beautiful, but on top of it she's also fun, energetic, entertaining, lively, and she hangs out with a goat. An adorable, cute little animal. Don't give me that, okay? Goats are cool. And then there's also, she's got a big heart. She's a very compassionate individual, so much so that her song when she's in the chapel is by far one of the best Disney animated songs ever. And fuck you if you disagree with me on that. Hey, I didn't say I'm compassionate. She is. And finally, there's Japanese cartoons, a.k.a. anime. Now, of course, that in and of itself, much like with Western cartoons, there's so many options to go with. So I'm going to go with something classical and something that's also kind of different than all the other characters. And that is Kasumi Tendo from Ranma One Half. Now, what sets her apart from the others in the show is that she's a giver. Not only is she compassionate like Esmeralda, but she actually is a giver and a caretaker. Now, then, you've got Ranma, a character from the show, who could do that kind of stuff, but is technically a guy, even though he can turn to a girl and exploit himself on purpose, or by accident. And, you know, there's other characters to go with as well. Akane, exploited a lot. Shampoo, exploited a lot. Usually on purpose. I mean, even Nabiki gets some flesh time shown out. But every now and then the show does remind us that Kasumi's pretty damn hot. Which, one of the last episodes, she actually wins a bikini beauty contest without even being a contestant. So, but what sets her apart is caretaker. I need a woman in my harem to be able to make me some food. So, there we go. Kasumi Tendo, come on down. You're the guys right. Well, that was fun. Who knows, maybe this will start a trend, though I kind of doubt it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and do something kind of unrelated to this topic. Don't judge me.